What is up today, guys? Jimmy back from the RT Clinic, and I've got a cool device today that I want to show you that I think we all need to learn about because it's going to revolutionize how we manage asthma. So I'm going to get to it. It's called the Pheno Pro. Let's go. What's up everybody? We have the Pheno Pro here and we are gonna be measuring uh, a specific type of molecule in the airway in parts per billion. And it's gonna be nitric oxide, N-O. This is not N-O-2, this is not nitrous. This is nitric. Studies have shown that inside of inflamed airways, your body releases in your exhaled air nitric oxide. Now you say, what? Why would I care about that in such a small amount? Well, this is great to use when managing asthma. We know that asthma, cause, there's inflammation from the asthma, and it's usually, if it's allergic component to it, it's from the eosinophils. The eosinophilic reaction inside your airways releases that nitric oxide. So in the past, how do we treat it? Well, you give a bronchodilator for bronchospasm, but then you give an inhaled corticosteroid for inflammation. How much steroid do you give? Well, I don't know, we give them, we give them initial low dose. If they're not better with the low dose, they're having more, having exacerbations till we give them a higher dose, then a higher dose, and a higher dose. This takes the guessing game out of it. That's what this is all about. Because what we can do is do an initial number for the patient, have them do an initial uh, test with the Niox machine, the Pheno machine. There's a couple different machines on the market that do it. And it'll give us a, an amount of nitric oxide in their airways. Then we treat them four to six weeks with a dose of inhaled corticosteroids, have them come back and do the same exact test. If the nitric oxide levels have fallen to a normal level, we could say at that point that what we had done with the inhaled corticosteroids is working. It's not a guessing game. It's not a just give a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, or maybe this is appropriate for them based on symptoms. We have an actual number now that we can look at with nitric oxide. Now you might also think, well, why don't I just take the health cork steroids and if I feel better, I feel better. We know that chronic inflammation inside the lungs, specifically with asthma, can cause like anything like you would get inflammation, if you had a cut on your hand and it gets inflamed, it's gonna swell up. And then over time, if it's not taken care of, it's gonna cause a scar. Same kind of scarring can happen in your airways. And that's why we're so adamant for our asthmatic patients to be on inhaled corticosteroids to reduce the inflammation. Chronic inflammation actually will later turn into hardened airways and you get the really terrible term, which is airway remodeling, which nobody wants because that's permanent damage that can't be reversed. So we want to make sure we're treating the asthmatics with the appropriate amount of inhaled corticosteroid. And it's really important for that. So this tool here, and I'll show you how to do it shortly, is great for looking at, do we have the appropriate dose for the patient? Now you say, would this work for COPD or emphysema or any of those CBABE diseases that fall under COPD? And it could, because we do treat them with inhaled corticosteroids, but specifically those eosinophils are the ones that are gonna release this nitric oxide. So let's do an initial test on me, and then I'm not an allergic asthmatic, but uh, we're gonna initial test on me and I'll show you how easy it is. This is probably something that you may do as part of a yearly pulmonary function test, is d using a uh, device to measure exhaled nitric oxide. So it's really important and just know it's used to help manage your inhaled corticosteroids. So I'll show you how to do it. So the device actually can be plugged in, but it has an internal battery 
has a wand on it, it's pretty easy here. We have a disposable mouthpiece. Uh, these come single patient use, of course, and it's pretty simple. They just rotate on here like this. Okay, now we're gonna look at our initial screen and you see our initial screen kind of gives us a little bit of a rundown of how to take our breath in. So I would highly recommend that it gives you a practice, the ability to practice, and that's what you definitely wanna do. You wanna practice first. So I'm gonna grab the camera and take a look at this real quick. All right, you can see it has the option to practice right here. So, and it's kind of a older screen so you can see the flickering on it, but we're gonna go to practice first. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exhale into this and I wanna keep the arrow in the green. So here goes my big exhalation. Bingo, good job. So what that shows is that I could exhale into that for 10 seconds and it's not, it's a, more of a constant flow. It doesn't have to be fast or slow. It's just more of a constant pressure you're holding. And so it's pretty easy for anybody with any type of lung disease to be able to do. So let's actually do the real test on me now. We'll go to done on that and we're gonna do the real test. So we'll start. All right, let's begin the test. And here we go, same situation. All right, Yahtzee, stop now. So it's gonna do a quick countdown right now. As you can see, it's counting down to analyze the, the data. Now, what are we gonna know about the data? Well, there's normal ranges like on anything else we're going to have a normal range and so the great thing is, is the company send you information about the normal range so less than 25 parts per billion is considered normal all right less than 25 is considered normal 25 to 50 in adults is actually considered to be kind of in a middle stage to be cautious uh there may be you yeah, have some persistent allergen exposure Remember, any type of allergen exposure, even if you're allergic to food, this could throw it off also. So if you have that problem. But let's go and look at my test numbers. Yahtzee, that's what I'm talking about, less than 10. So my airways are all good. And so other things that could also throw it off, it could be a multitude of different things, but they're all gonna be related to any kind of allergic reaction. So the next number you look at is gonna be, so we had less than 25, then we have 25 to 50. Greater than 50 is there's eosinophilic a, uh, action inside the airways. So you've got some issues in your airways and you would benefit from an inhaled corticosteroid if you're greater than 50. So how do we do that? Well, if you're not on it, you're gonna start it. Come back in four to six weeks and do it again. It should bring your levels either down to the less than 25 or even the 25 to 50 means it's managed. So you're managing it. So we all exhale nitric oxide, which is something kind of cool, which I didn't really realize until I started working with these. But you, there are high levels that you could exhale, which is an indicator of what your airways look like. So it's like just taking a quick view of what's going on down in the airways and allowing us to say, okay, we're gonna give you this med and then we're gonna see this improvement, which is really cool in medicine because sometimes we shotgun things, right? We give people a lot of things and say, how does it feel in so much time from now? The cool thing about measuring exhaled nitric oxide is we can actually see, is this working appropriately? If you're up to the max dose of inhaled corticosteroids and it hasn't gone down, maybe we need to look at something else. Maybe we need to be, instead of inhaled, maybe we need to be on orals. So just to know this number can be thrown off by a couple different things but like anything else, it's a trend. So we wouldn't take somebody's heart rate and see that it's 50 and start freaking out unless we have heart rates previously on them that are co continuously in the hundreds, then 50 might be an issue. You need to have serial data on somebody to make sure that you're making accurate um, diagnoses or accurate assumptions about what their health is.
So to have a high level on somebody would probably be good to repeat it. And so you'd repeat the test maybe a couple days later to make sure you can reel out other things. Start the inhaled ketocorticosteroid at that point, four to six weeks come back, test it again, and then see if it came down. And that's gonna show you that it's working. And another thing it's gonna do patient-wise, it's gonna encourage patients to say, I need to be taking this inhaled corticosteroid. A lot of times people take it for a short amount of time and then they stop because they forget and they don't get a habit. But it's so important for asthmatics because we really want them to be able to reduce that inflammation in their airways and get in front of any remodeling that may go on from that chronic inflammation. So thanks for watching today. I hope you learned something about exhaled nitric oxide and make sure you uh, subscribe down below. I appreciate that open the comments. I try to get back to all of them. And I also got some merch at the bottom if you're interested in RT Clinic Light in the Darkness merch. So I will see you next time. Later.